All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for attending today. Um, what we're going to do is uh, give you guys a presentation on call tracking and specifically um, an agency guide to call tracking. Um, uh, we work with uh, about 70% of our book of business is agency, so we actually get a really great visibility to uh, what you guys need and how call tracking works for you. Um, so we're going to hit a couple of high points today. We're going to you know, do a quick overview of what call tracking is, um, do a quick overview of some use cases where call tracking is, is particularly applicable, uh, talk specifically to uh, some integrations that make call tracking kind of supercharged, even more uh, useful, using it with uh, analytics tools and CRMs and, and so forth. Uh, and then give a quick recap of uh, why it's beneficial and why over you know, the, the last uh, several years it's become an essential portion of uh, the analytics uh, landscape for agencies to provide to their clients. Um, so my name is Jeff Culleton. I'm uh, a, a member of the business development team for Mongoose Metrics. I've been with the organization for three years. Uh, before that, I actually came from uh, the agency world. So I have uh, quite a bit of visibility to the client side, um, analytics, and reporting to those clients on a monthly basis. So uh, the, the transition from uh, agency world to Mongoose was actually a pretty easy one. So it's kind of neat we get to work with agencies on a day-to-day -day basis, see the uh, best practices uh, from a, in a sample set of agencies around the country. So, um, you know, couple of housekeeping things just to get to in advance. Uh, we will be recording the webinar uh, and making it available on demand. Every uh, of the attendees will be receiving uh, 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 an email after this with a link uh, leading to that audio. Um, uh, it, all interested parties in learning more about Mongoose can obviously contact us uh, at 866-407-3255. We'll provide you that number again as well. Um, and as always, uh, our sales team is available for uh, free consultations. Uh, you can always get us at our sales domain, which is sales at mongoosemetrics.com. Um, and uh, one last thing, so for anybody who has questions, uh, hold on to them. Uh, and at the end, we'll kind of do a, a round robin. We have some questions that we can, uh, you know, pretty typical that we like to go over as well. But uh, anybody who's got something additional, uh, please uh, feel free to type it in um, to your questions section of the GoToWebinar. Uh, and we'll be sure to uh, hit anything that's out there. So, here we go. Let the slide catch up real quick. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, we have to be on the right portion. So, uh, here we go. So, you know, like I said, at Mongoose, we work primarily with agencies uh, in uh, uh, one of the stats that has become more and more prominent over the last couple of years is uh, the agencies need uh, to prove ROI to their clients. So this is a, an interesting stat from uh, a HubSpot study uh, that we uh, were reading a little while ago where, you know, proving ROI to your clients is becoming paramount. Uh, it's, it, as analytics tools have become more pervasive in the market, um, agencies, uh, it is an expectation that are, we, we are constantly providing analytics uh, new analytics, updated analytics to our clients to validate our efforts. Um, and this, you know, just kind of justifies or uh, exemplifies that and justifies, you know, uh, the use of call tracking to kind of meld that online and that offline experience. Uh, one of the ways that it is becoming more and more prominent to use call tracking and one of the reasons that it's become so essential um, is because of those analytics tools. So here's obviously just a quick sample set of people that we currently work with. Um, and we'll get deeper into why these, um, uh, these integrations are important later. But for, from a call tracking perspective, one of the things that we do is, is we make a very clear point of trying to integrate with analytics tools. Uh, so uh, Google Analytics, Google AdWords, uh, CRMs, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, many others, uh, as well as... Um, bid management software. So as paid search continues to just explode all over the place and people's budgets go through the roof, bid management tools are just being used uh, significantly to help companies kind of malign that, uh, that uh, beast of a paid search budget um, and, and use their dollars uh, as, as well as they can. So that's a, that's a huge facet for us. So 
really what the crux of, of call tracking is and why it's a value to um, agencies and our clientele is uh, the lost opportunity. What's the oppor opportunity cost of not using um, call tracking? So functionally, we all have these really robust tools that tell us everything that happens um, on a web page, on a landing page, on an email, whatever the electronic forms of connecting with your customers are. Um, we have these phenomenal analytics, these really granular tools. However, unless you're an e-commerce platform and those sales are being, uh, you know, the end of those sales happen in your digital purview, a lot of those, uh, those conversations, those appointments and those sales are generated offline. So, you know, the, the crux of call, call tracking was how do we connect those online activities with the offline behaviors that actually generated a sale or an appointment? And how do we report on those consequently? Um, so that you know, kind of brings us into what is call tracking. Um, so call, we, we joke around here, but call tracking is kind of a narrow view. It's kind of uh, a little bit old, an old school view of what uh, the, our particular vertical does now. Call tracking in a lot of ways was always um, associated with you know, a phone number on a billboard, a phone number in a radio spot, which it still absolutely is valid for, but it's gone so much further than that um, with session and keyword level tracking that we refer to it now as a call measurement and attribution. And what that really kind of signifies is that not only are we telling people you know, what calls are happening, but we're telling you the result of those calls. Uh, we're telling you what happened before that call. We're telling you what happened during that call and consequently what happened after the call. Um, so this was a, a you know, quote that we all kind of liked as the initial results were eye-opening for the client as the volume of leads coming through from the tracking numbers were unexpected. Um, a lot of our digital agencies, a lot of our SEOs and PPCs um, have a great view of what they've driven online. And then when they start doing call tracking, you know, they scratch their heads and say, hey, we were not taking credit for all this stuff throughout time. Um, which is obviously a detriment to your business and, you know, hurts you in terms of retention. Um, so, you know, to further go into that, so call tracking is utilized in a number of different facets now, um, but it all leads to the same point. So what's making the phone ring? Um, your traditional avenues, obviously, still very, very applicable um, to most marketers, so newspaper, radio, TV, billboard. Um, uh, the internet has uh, paid search, SEO, referral display have exploded the ways in which you can get brand recognition in front of your clients. But what does that brand recognition turn into? Um, so for agencies, it, it really gives you a full scope of, of the leads that you're pushing, uh, not just online but offline. Um, it allows you to continually optimize and improve. So you know, we all know and are familiar with aggregating reports to send back to our clients on a monthly basis. Um, those reports are not just, you know, the blocking and tackling of being an agency. They're, you know, they're, they're the keys for not setting it and forgetting it. Those are, you know, every month taking a look at, you know, what these, uh, what these campaigns have done and then tweaking them so that, uh, so that they become even more effective, so that your click-through rates are better, um, so that the number of phone calls that you get are better. Um, and from the client side, you know, it allows you to put ROI to multi-channel uh, campaigns. Nobody, nobody markets in a silo anymore. Um, and so it gives us visibility uh, across the spectrum. Um, and it also justifies ad spend. Um, so, you know, we're all familiar uh, as agencies what happened to marketing budgets, um, you know, in the late 2000s. And, and now they really started to pick back up people's paid search budgets, uh, as we were just talking about, are kind of through the roof now for major organizations. So it allows you to really put a justifiable ROI number to you know all those efforts that you're doing, uh, and uh, and and report back to your clients and say, hey, you know, we're 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 not just the account management fees that we're charging. Uh, this is what we're actually generating for you in terms of revenue. Um, so just to do a quick recap, excuse me, of of the basics of what we do, of, of what you'll see in the marketplace uh, is. You know, like like I said, there's there's going to be many offshoots of these feature sets, but the basics of call tracking are really two things. So first, static numbers. Uh, the most basic uh, form of call tracking. This harkens back to billboard, TV, radio. Uh, it's gone online now. Um, but what static numbers really are, or we refer to them internally as a one to one number, uh, is a one to one relationship between the marketing initiative and the phone number. 
So we give you one number, 555-5555 for a radio spot. From that, what we'll be able to denote is obviously the source of those phone calls, the number of phone calls that were generated, uh, any of the call recordings that were generated, um, the date and time, geolocation, as well as duration of those calls. So from our perspective and from our verticals perspective, high level. There's a lot deeper you can go, but for a lot of marketers, this is all you need. Extremely useful, gets you a good visibility. If your clients are not super data driven, it can tell you, hey, we drove this many leads from this source this month. And for a lot of people, that is a, a perfect analytic. That's all you need to know. You don't need to overdo it. Um, so static numbers, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's the top level. And when you get down into the more granular level, that's dynamic number insertion. So this is uh, kind of where Mongoose, uh, you know, cut our teeth in the industry um, because we're not the oldest call tracking company, but we were the first to kind of bring dynamic number insertion and session level call tracking uh, to the mainstream. And a lot of that happened through our partnership with Google that we'll get into later. But uh, so dynamic number insertion um, is, is functionally very similar to the static numbers, but it allows us to put a snippet of JavaScript on a site, append some destination URLs, and then get good visibility to what is happening from specific online sources. So a lot of people refer to this as keyword level call tracking. What we can do is cookie somebody's user session, uh, provide them with a, a unique dynamic number on a web page that's either come from paid search, referral, display, organic traffic, up until very recently. Um, and then uh, using that dynamic number that we've provided them on their site, cookie that session for 12 hours. And when they've finally called that number, we can correlate back the user session to the actual phone call. So from that, what we can denote is what keyword drove that phone call, what raw search query, what ad type, what match type. Um, as well as the last I, or the IP address and the last URL visited by that uh, uh, by that user, so this becomes extremely powerful for people that are using uh, or that are using PPC and have large budgets. So the reason it's powerful is if you're a marketer, you're an agency, and you're working for uh, a client who has a large online presence, multiple different channels, but most of their clients really end up uh, converting offline. This gives you visibility to that. So you can report on impressions, you can report on click-through rate, you can report on all of those things, um, but unless you have visibility to you know, the true pathway of those users and whether or not they ended up converting offline with an appointment or a sale, um, you're missing quite a bit of the picture. Um, so this, is, this has become more and more prevalent within the marketplace as, um, you know, uh, keyword, uh, the prices for keywords, the bids for keywords have gone up uh, significantly. Um, so this is, this is really the crux of what Mongoose does that's kind of a differentiator in the market. Um, so moving on, um, the basic features of call measurement and attribution. So there are, as, as we referred to before, there's a multitude of different things you can do with the data um, and a multitude of different features uh, that are spun off from those two basic core functions. Uh, but we just wanted to hit some of the high notes here uh, and kind of show you guys what um, the major points that our clientele typically um, come to us with. Uh, so first and foremost uh, is the differentiator between local and toll-free numbers. Um, so local and toll-free numbers, um, you know, are really for, for advertisers cost the same thing. The question is when are they utilized uh, and how are they best utilized? So we have a quick breakdown here of two different landing pages, uh, one with a toll-free, one with a local number on it. So from our perspective and the way we typically um, advise our clients, national campaigns, uh, large brands, people that are doing um, you know, large swatches of area, a toll-free number typically has a better conversion rate um, than a local number. So you know, if there's a you know, major national brand, whatever it, it may be, um, those toll-free numbers are um, are usually the go-to. The other nice thing about toll-free numbers is they're limitless. You know, uh, they're, they're almost infinite in their usage. Uh, you don't get hindered by uh, what you would get hindered by in a local number capacity where, you know, there's only so much a finite number in those pools. There's only so many that can be utilized. Um, that being said, 
every piece of research and all the client work that we've done over the years shows that if you're doing localized campaigns, the vast majority of our clientele are going to use a local number and that a local number actually has a much better click-through rate. Um, using, we're located in Cleveland, Ohio, we have three primary uh, area codes, 330-440 and 216. For a company that has um, businesses within each one of those area codes, uh, we always recommend that you parse out those campaigns so that uh, uh, people who are searching you feel more comfortable that they're going to be calling something that's very localized to them. Um, so, like I said, you know, there, there's, uh, there, there's rationales behind using both, uh, but both are completely valid. So, uh, moving on next, this is a quick snapshot and, and a foray into what we'll go into uh, in a little bit, uh, but this is just a quick snapshot of uh, analytics conversions. Um, so we mentioned before that one of the hallmarks of what we do or what any call tracking company is going to do uh, is to push this data into another platform, to marry it with a marketer's existing data so that you can get the utmost visibility to cross-channel conversions. Um, this is, we, we suggest with every single one of our clients who use Google Analytics or AdWords uh, that you should be pushing our data uh, outside of our dashboard and into that dashboard um, because it, it does give you just a, a, a better view of what, uh, um, a better view of what the, the total picture is. Um, you know, uh, this, this is also applicable to bit management tools, which we'll get into later, but quick snapshot of what that uh, phone conversion data typically looks like. This is from Google Analytics, but what that, uh, that phone conversion data can look like in your uh, existing data sets. Uh, rules engine. Um, so our goal here uh, typically is to get as personalized and, and finite for each campaign as we can. Uh, and what that meant to us over time is creating uh, a lot of different just, you know, if-then statements, uh, business uh, cases where you're going to, you're using our, our, our system to the fullest of its ability, but also doing that at the most cost-effective uh, place for your business. So one of the ways, uh, one of the use cases we use for the, the rules engine is, is branded traffic. Um, branded terms. So, so many people already have a very good visibility, marketers have a good visibility to, um, you know, what their branded terms are doing, um, how people are searching them, what they're driving to the business. You're not going to get a ton more insight. So, in those cases, what we would do is we just write a quick rule for our session level uh, keyword tracking that says, hey, if uh, somebody searched a branded term, don't provision them a unique phone number. It cuts down on costs. Uh, and it, it, you know, really clarifies the, the data set as well. Um, so just a, like I said, quick feature, quick sample set of what that feature is. Uh, next is an IVR. So an IVR, um, internally we view this as one of the most simple and one of the most useful tools that anybody who's looking to track phone calls uh, can utilize. So an IVR comes in, in two different flavors either an IVR that plays before a call or an IVR that plays uh, after the call. So you can see there's uh, kind of a different flow chart uh, of the ways that an IVR can progress uh, here. But to simplify it, uh, a pre-call IVR usually is one that everybody's familiar with. It says press one for sales, press two for service. Uh, what this allows uh, for a marketer to do is really parse out um, the number of sales calls versus the number of customer support calls. It can allow us to route those to different call centers. It can be very useful in not bogging down a sales team with a lot of customer support calls. It's something we at Mongoose use internally just for that reason. When you go over to a pre or a post call IVR, this is where you can get some really good granular data about what happened on the call. So typically what we'll do is we'll engage with either a call center or the reps that are actually taking the phone calls uh, for, the, for the business and have them do a very simple press one if it was a sale, press two if it wasn't a sale. Uh, if it was a sale, we can have them drop down a level in that IVR and have them enter the amount of that sale. So once again, extremely intuitive, very easy to use, and what it does for the agency and what it does for the end marketer is it says, okay, these calls are generating X amount of revenue. Since the end game of all of this is to get to an actual number of physical return on investment, this is an extremely simple way to do that. 
Um, there's much more complex ways uh, when we're tying into CRM systems, but for companies, smaller businesses that don't have a CRM system, don't want to pay for a Salesforce or a Sugar CRM, uh, this can be a really easy way of disseminating what happened on a phone call. All right, uh, moving into use cases. So call tracking use cases, basically where we're just gonna kind of flush through here um, are the typical pathways uh, that we see with our customers of using the different products that we have. Um, there's going to be a little bit of redundancy here, but we can kind of move through them relatively quickly. Uh, so the first of which, uh, and the most basic of which, uh, that one-to-one -one level of call tracking. So this, this breaks out the static versus dynamic numbers. Uh, so, you know, the top version, the 877 number. Um, what we would do in this instance is say, you know what, we want to know what's happening from our direct traffic. So we want an, a unique phone number uh, that we're going to put on our website. That number is going to tell us how many people called directly from our website. Uh, so what we do in that instance, we give you a specific phone number. That specific phone number is hard-coded onto the website. We are able to, using that unique phone number, break out all that granular information about how many calls, uh, obviously the source of that direct traffic, um, the, those call recordings uh, give you some high-level analytics around that. Uh, the step beyond that uh, would be this 888 number. So this 888 number we're kind of referencing as a dynamic number. So uh, if we want to know, once again, at that high level, hey, what is, what is search, uh, what is SEO or PPC driving me? Uh, what is referral or display traffic driving me? What we do in those instances is we give you, once again, that uh, unique number. Uh, we'll put a snippet of JavaScript on the site or the landing page where that, uh, uh, that ad or that uh, referral source is being directed. Uh, and then we'll append the destination URLs uh, of that traffic. So what happens is if somebody clicks through, boom, all of a sudden that number dynamically changes within a couple of milliseconds as that page loads. The user never sees the number change, but it allows us to say, hey, this phone call was generated by this particular source uh, because we give a unique phone number to each one of those referral sources. Once again, gives you that higher level of analytic, but gives you some good uh, breakout of which sources are, are pushing which traffic. All right, uh, now on to PPC campaigns. Uh, and this is that keyword or that session level of traffic. Um, this is, in many ways, very similar to that dynamic traffic, uh, but what we do is just tweak slightly. So um, in a PPC setting, uh, a, a, a user is going to search uh, whatever search term they do. They're going to find a PPC campaign, click on that URL, and then be redirected to your landing page or your site. Um, using that same uh, JavaScript uh, that we place on the site, as well as appending those destination URLs, we're going to give each one of those unique visitors their own phone number, and then we're going to cookie that user session for 12 hours. So in that, when a user calls that phone number, our system is able to look at that user session and correlate it to that phone call. Um, so in that, once again, we're going to be able to tell you that more granular level of analytic, what keyword, what raw search query, what ad type, what match type, are actually driving phone calls. Now what's interesting about PPC campaigns is we actually end up doing a lot of A-B testing on this, specifically what, what you can see on the self-storage example on the left uh, around uh, Google extensions. Um, so a lot of people, since click-through rates are relatively low, are under the impression, rightfully so, that people search and then call directly from the site. So what we'll do in those cases is we'll give you a one-to-one -one phone number for that specific Google extension and then report back hey, how many people called from the extension? How many people called from the actual click-through to the site? Um, so some interesting A-B testing there, which is kind of a theme for us. Um, so moving on, uh, referral and, or excuse me, retargeting and display. Um, th this works functionally in the exact same way um, as the other dynamic numbers will. Um, we can associate a phone number with each one of those campaigns, however many different campaigns you have for your referral and display traffic when you get a click through or when you get a call directly from uh, one of those advertisements, we'll be able to report back to you, obviously, the number of calls that came through uh, and give you some really nice granular analytics around what those two specific uh, sources uh, are pushing. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, email marketing. This is where we see the most A-B testing. Um, so different content, 
different subject lines. Obviously, we all know um, content is in many ways king. So being able to focus down on what content is the most useful for your clientele and then consequently drives phone calls uh, is really, really important. And the better the content gets, uh, the better the A-B testing actually gets. So what we'll do is we'll just put a different number uh, uh, towards that different content. Uh, we'll help marketers to look at which one of those content pieces, which one of those subject lines was more successful in terms of conversion, uh, and then you know give them that uh, granularity so they can uh, optimize those email campaigns uh, and hopefully get better click-through rates. Okay, moving on to, uh, and this is one of my favorite slides in the deck. So what does all this mean? What does it boil down to? Um, and why is it useful? Um, what, does, what are the typical questions uh, that call tracking answers? Um, and I'll just kind of briefly run through some of them right now. Um, you know, which campaigns are driving the most conversions? Does the ROI of the marketing campaign warrant increasing the client's investment or scaling back? That's a big one for us, uh, especially on paid search looking at um, you know, which keywords are underperforming and are they really underperforming and, and reducing that budget. Um, uh, what is the audience's preferred form of conversion? Um, you know, for larger scale purchases, uh, the phone is still the primary means of conversion. You know, not a lot of people purchase uh, a $30,000 vehicle online. In fact, marketers uh, are, uh, most consumers can't even do it. Um, so that human interaction, that phone call is still a necessity. Um, what should I uh, consider adjusting my calls to action? Um, are there specific headlines, messages, imagery, or calls to action that drive more conversions? Uh, which conversions uh, of my A-B tests uh, convert at a higher rate? Um, how does placement uh, or styling of a phone number in an ad, email, or landing page impact conversions? Uh, which we actually we do a lot of internally. Uh, in my email database or subscriber uh, base qualified or engaged. So, you know, are the people that I'm marketing to, are they really the people that are going to be using our products? Are they the people that are going to be calling us? Um, so this is something we can question in the Q&A and get more into, but, you know, this is really the, you know, this is the end game. This is why is it beneficial for us? Why should we use it for our clients? Um, so uh, I think that's a good one. Okay, um, and something you know I've, I've foreshadowed maybe three times in this presentation. So how to close the loop. Um, this is getting into the analytics piece. Um, uh, how do we marry, uh, using APIs or FTPs, how do we marry our data with other existing data, other existing platforms uh, that our clients are already using to make it the most actionable that it can be? Um, so this first slide, uh, this kind of uh, denotes analytics tools. So like I said before, uh, Google Analytics, Google AdWords. Um, uh, Google really uh, catapulted Mongoose Metrics to the forefront um, when it you know, kind of started to blog about uh, our service and keyword level tracking and how it can really opt help you optimize your keyword budgets um, and, and your marketing uh, 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 using analytics in conjunction with uh, um, uh, Mongoose metrics and our keyword level of data. Um, so any of these tools, Unica, um, which is an IBM company that we, we work with quite frequently, Web Trends, or any of the, the number of different analytics platforms are out there. But being able to inject phone call conversion data, phone call goals into your already existing website traffic to get good visibility to, um, to what is happening and what is uh, actually generating phone calls. AdWords, so now we start getting into the monetization of it. Um, so AdWords, uh, just recently, um, we've, we've done a couple of uh, updated um, projects with Google AdWords and Analytics. Uh, for Universal Analytics, being able to um, you know, drive offline conversions uh, and enhance campaigns. Um, but you know, injecting phone call data in there so you can start to optimize your bids. Um, like I said, you know, uh, the vast majority of integrations that we do are centered either around Google Analytics or AdWords just because they're so widely used in the market. Um, bid management tools. So for brands that are using, a, you know, uh, doing so much paid search that they really need a platform to manage that out of, uh, you can see these are the three primaries that we work with, Marin, uh, Acquisio, and Kenshu, getting visibility to um, what those customers are doing, and then being able to automatically optimize bids uh, for particular keywords based off of 
what that online behavior is and how it's generating um, traffic. So, you know, I know specifically with Aquizio and Marin, um, there's automated tools that you can use now uh, that will uh, look at the number of phone calls that are being generated by a particular keyword or ad group, and then from there, upping uh, your potential bids on those specific keywords uh, in, in the hopes of generating more phone calls. Um, these things are automated. They're super actionable um, for, like I said, people who are managing hundreds of thousands of keywords. Um, these tools make your day-to-day -day way easier um, than having to try and aggregate and, and work all those um, from, from one place. Uh, now CRMs. Um, I think uh, this, is, this is probably the holy grail um, of what uh, using our tool in conjunctions with other tools uh, are because you know when you have a CRM you can track that actual client so the the use case I always kind of use for CRMs comes from Salesforce and that's strictly because that's what we use internally so that's what we do a lot of our testing on and they're kind of a juggernaut in the industry but we do a ton of integrations with Microsoft Dynamics and Sugar um, as well as custom one-off integrations um, for tools that are kind of organically made um, but the reason I like CRMs and using CRMs to, um, to tie call tracking data in is because you can functionally go from, hey, this keyword shoes in southern Florida was typed in, somebody saw my paid search ad, they clicked on it, they came to my site. Shoes actually in this instance is probably a really bad example because people buy in Zappos all the time. Let's say a car. Um, but call into the actual um, establishment, you know, get, uh, get a, a rep of some sort, set an appointment. While that rep is on the phone with that person, they're likely creating a lead record. That lead record is going to have, you know, X amount of personal data about that person, typically a phone number, a name, maybe an address and an email address. Um, and when that, is, uh, when that is, uh, is actually captured in a CRM tool, we have the ability to go in using an API look for uh, pieces of data that are um, uh, congruent to what we already have, which is typically uh, the caller ID. And then from there, we can update that lead record with all the data that we've already extracted. So from there, we can, we can throw in keyword, raw search query, ad type, match type, source, call recordings, all this really, really powerful stuff so that the end marketer can track that person all the way to a sale. So you can get that phone call. That phone call is John Smith. John Smith ends up purchasing a $30,000 vehicle. And that, that, uh, that marketer can go into that, uh, that CRM system, say, hey, John Smith spent $30,000 with us. We made $1,500 off of that. How much did that keyword that drove John Smith to us cost? That click-through cost us 34 bucks. Wow, that's really great return on investment. So that's where it really becomes super powerful data. When you can look at a click-through on a PPC ad and then take that all the way to a finalized sale and a finalized ROI. So, you know, I, like I said, I think that's kind of the holy grail for this stuff. Uh, and, and for people that are, you know, kind of engaged, I, I really implore you, um, if, you're, if you're, um, your clients are using a CRM system, figure out if you can inject call tracking data in there because it becomes more actionable, and you're able to report better on ROI. Uh, all right, so we will, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up, but um, I wanted to just get into a quick um, tips for selling. Uh, if you're the agency, what are the tips for selling this into your client? How is it, uh, how is it best received? What are the best practices that we at Mongoose have seen through time that make it really um, tangible? to your clients and to, to show them that that ROI is going to be um, there over time. So first, know the value proposition. So you know, talk about the specific information. Obviously, you want to you go in loaded with what the, uh, the, the uh, functions of the, the product are, but uh, you know, just be able to talk about specific information. Um, uh, instead, you, you want to concentrate on outcomes. You know, talk about how this can, uh, this can lead to ROI. Um, not necessarily activities, but, you know, uh, show people that this is, you know, that the end game of this is our actual factual numbers, dollar signs. Uh, so number two, uh, speak about the solutions. 
So when I mean, when I say that, I mean you know avoid getting bogged down in explaining you know the various call tracking features. Um, that's something we're always willing to come into um, and, and help with if you have that kind of relationship with your uh, with your clientele. Um, talk about how, how call tracking can close a loop. Be very solution oriented. Talk about you know what problems does this particularly solve as opposed to the feature sets of it. Like I said, we can we can give you uh, we can give you information for that. Uh, cast a wider net. Um, so uh, explain the benefits beyond marketing. Um, uh, go back and review call recordings uh, as a coaching method. Uh, we have a lot of people that do that. Uh, find opportunities to evolve scripts um, for you know a lot on the, the automotive side or you know very heavy in, inbound uh, selling activities. Uh, we see a lot of people do that. Um, give sales professionals more information about the lead um, so they can customize their follow-up. That's huge. Um, from a customer service side of things, be able to track um, you know, how your clients are being engaged um, by, um, you know, by your reps. Um, discover how calls are being managed by customer service reps. Um, are, those opportunities, are there opportunities to improve that uh, internally? Everybody wants their first touch point um, with their organization to be a really positive one, and this can help do that. Um, and also last, uh, log past call information, uh, date, time, length, that kind of stuff. So get a big swatch of information that can be disseminated over time. Have a preferred vendor. So, you know, I always say this, there's, there's, there's some really great vendors out there uh, in the call tracking realm these days. Um, but typically we're very specific to kind of solving little individual problems for different kinds of marketers. Um, so be prepared to answer questions. Um, who's the best provider uh, for your, the, your client's particular problem and why? Um, have well thought out answers to the questions um, uh, will give your clients a lot of confidence. Uh, obviously, we're more than happy to load you up with anything necessary. Um, uh, typically, ask questions so that you can go in there and really be a pro um, when it comes to best practices and the typical um, questions that we see um, from from agencies and marketers uh, on the first uh, on the first go around. Uh, uh, and one of the last ones, uh, take advantage of available resources. I know uh, at Mongoose, we, our marketing team does a really great job of um, constantly blogging, creating different white papers. Um, we just had a, an ebook that launched that's been really, really well received. Um, doing webinars, you know, access the available information that, um, that uh, these call tracking providers are going to give to you. Um, you know, we have a multitude of things that are available on our website. Um, please feel free at any time to kind of uh, reach out to that and also reach out to us. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, designate a coach. Uh, this is probably the single um, uh, biggest way we've found that people can use us um, uh, and, and really get great traction. If you have an internal resource that you know, takes it upon themselves to be the champion for call tracking, whomever the vendor may be, knowing the industry, knowing the ins and outs, knowing what data points can be provided, uh, knowing what call tracking vendors do what best. Um, designate somebody internally, you know, have them be the go-to so that that person can be easily accessible um, through uh, for, for client calls when this kind of stuff comes up, when you're looking at different RFPs. Um, it can be really, really valuable uh, moving forward. Um, so, you know, last and not least, what do we want you guys uh, to have as the main takeaways from this? Uh, demonstrate ROI. That's the that's the primary focus of call tracking. Uh, being able to get down to an actual number, proving ROI for your efforts. Uh, avoid missed opportunities. Um, being able to not only report to your client, but see places where um, there's more valuable more value there, um, and and really optimizing that. Uh, using integrations. There's a lot of integrations. Open APIs are a wonderful thing and they're all over the place now. So using integrations to get your data into the systems that your clients are already using can be really, really valuable. Um, and strategic value-based selling approach. Um, you know, th this, is, this is an ROI game um, showing, you know, what call tracking costs versus what it really um, generates is a very, very easy thing to do. Um, so use it, optimize it. Um, we're here to help. Um, and, and, you know, we'll always be putting out new content um, and we'll always be uh, available for client calls if necessary. So uh, last but not least, questions.
we'll, uh, in this portion, we, you know, we have a couple that we kind of hit. Anybody who has questions, feel free to type them in, um, and our gang will kind of uh, um, hopefully get some of those and then uh, be able to, uh, um, uh, we'll be able to knock out some specific instances, but, you know, please let me know. Uh, we'll open the floor to questions now. All right, so uh, first and foremost, generally speaking, what is the percentage of calls to form completions a client campaign generates? Um, there's no simple answer. Um, it's really, really uh, uh, vertical specific. Um, I, I see in uh, industries with um, more traditional sales uh, aspects, like an automotive industry, uh, you're going to get a lot more phone calls versus form submittals. Um, people in a larger sale typically want to get some um, uh, more information and they feel more comfortable doing it over the phone. Um, in more advanced selling, like in, in the software side of things, uh, we were having a conversation before this, people do so much of their research in advance. Um, so by the time a, a phone call actually happens, uh, that person is really far down the sales funnel. Um, so what we, um, I would say it varies per, uh, per vertical, you know, on our side of thing, we get a ton of form submittals before we get phone calls. Um, but like I said, in the automotive side, it's really reversed. So, um, we can give you some very specific insight into what we've seen in the past. Um, but like I said, well, uh, it's kind of a case by case basis. Uh, all right. Uh, next one, what is the cost of call tracking? So call tracking is kind of all over the board, depending on, um, you know, the size of the rollout, but two things that are always going to be consistent is uh, uh, the two factors that pricing is based off of. So the number of phone numbers that are needed um, uh, and the number of uh, uh, minutes that those phone numbers generate. So just for really, really broad, you know, kind of guesstimates, you know, phone numbers go anywhere from, you know, a dollar to five dollars a number and minutes go anywhere from, you know, four cents to ten cents a minute, just depending on who you're kind of working with and the size and the scale uh, of the uh, the rollout that's going to be done. Obviously, it's a, you know, like anything, it's it's volume based. So the more you do, the, the, the lower the cost per unit is going to be. Um, another one, how do I determine if my clients need call tracking? Um, you know, usually the biggest differentiator or defining characteristic that we see um, is the value of the sale. What's the value of the sale? Um, if your customers have high values for sale, um, like in that automotive example, or we see a ton in the vacation realm um, where people are booking trips that are 2500 whatever the case is, um, typically if there's a, a higher volume, or uh, excuse me, a higher value to that sale, call tracking can be really, really useful because the phone is a, a very important portion uh, of that sales cycle. You know, if it's, if it's paper clips, if it's pencils, if you're, you know, things of that nature, two by fours at Lowe's, it's usually not that applicable because the, you know, the cost benefit of it isn't, is, isn't there. It's not enough. But if you're trying to buy a boat, um, not many people are going to go on to that manufacturer's site and complete that order. There's going to be a, uh, a form of personalization and customization that really only happens with uh, an internal resource. Um, so uh, I would say that's, that's probably a, a one very big determining factor um, in if your client needs call tracking. Um, and, and lastly, what if my client says no? Um, I like this one. Uh, they won't pay for call tracking. Um, this is, you know, it happens, and it's going to happen with what, when anybody considers something to be an expenditure. Um, the great thing about call tracking is it's typically a relatively minimal portion of a marketing budget. Um, and it gives you that granularity into what the ROI is. So what I would tell the people that are kind of having trouble selling it is, is A, obviously get the research, get the white papers, get the ebooks from uh, your tracking provider, um, and then talk to the people internally at that call tracking company because we're able to give you really great ROI models as to how, uh, how to sell it, how to say, hey, you know, this is going to cost you a couple hundred bucks, but that couple hundred dollars is going to allow us to evaluate or uh, validate, you know, seventy thousand dollars worth of sales that we didn't know where they were coming from before. You know, when you're talking to a C-level suite, uh, VP level, director level, those are the kind of things that are really impactful. And when you can put numbers to it, it typically ends up being uh, kind of a no-brainer. So uh, I, I think we are uh, uh, out of time. 
uh, we've come to the end of the, uh, the program today. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, we really appreciate your time. Um, uh, you will soon be getting uh, the uh, uh, emails uh, that will give you access to the audio files, uh, as well as access to us here at Mongoose. So an, an email as well as a phone number where you can uh, reach out to us if you have more questions. We'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer them. Uh, and if, uh, obviously, if you have any questions specifically for me, um, you can email me with those. My uh, email is jeff.culliton, C-U-L-L-I-T-O-N, at mongoosemetrics.com. Uh, so once again, thanks everybody and uh, have a great day. Hopefully we'll talk to you soon.